Hi, my name is Celia Morgan and I'm a professor of psychopharmacology in the psychology department here at the University of Exeter. So psychopharmacology is a bit of a mouthful, but essentially what it means is that I investigate the effects of drugs on the brain and behaviour. I got interested in psychopharmacology really because of my interest in this thing. Um, <clears throat> so I'm sure you're aware this is a, a human brain. This is the same size as an average adult human brain and they weigh around 1.3 kilograms. But don't let the size of it deceive you. This is an incredibly complex and powerful organ. So the adult human brain is estimated to have approximately 100 billion neurons in. So putting that in context, that's about the same number of stars as there are in the Milky Way galaxy. And each of those neurons or brain cells is connected to other neurons by an average of 7,000 individual connections called synapses between cells. So putting that in context again, that's about the same number of stars as there are in the universe. Um, so this blows my seven quintillion synapses, just thinking about it. And I know I'm biased, but I think this is the most fascinating area of research. I mean, it's at these seven quintillion synapses throughout the brain that the drugs I study have their action. Um, so synapses are the connections between neurons and they're actually little gaps. I'm gonna put my brain down. So where two neurons meet, there's a little gap between them. And in order for the electrical signals that are passing around the brain all the time to cross that gap, um, they need a chemical messenger. So it acts as a little ferry taking the electrical impulse from one neuron to the next. And it's actually there that drugs have their action, but either by stopping the ferries from leaving one neuron to another or increasing the flow. So this increases the strength of the signal between two neurons. And so I'm interested in drugs and synapses in particular, not just because synapses are where drugs work if you're working on psychopharmacological drugs, but also I'm interested in drugs that can stimulate a process called synaptogenesis and how we might harness this process for mental health benefit and to make our psychological therapies work better. Um, so synaptogenesis refers to basically the growth of new synapses and it occurs throughout our lifetime, but predominantly in the developing brain in a period which is called exuberant synaptogenesis, which I think is a rather lovely name. So this happens in the teenage brain, um, in the prefrontal cortex, which is this bit here at the front of the brain. And this is the bit that's important in all your higher cognitive functions. So things like decision making and planning. And in teenage years, this is alive with new, growing new connections in this exuberant synaptogenesis process. And then as you move into adolescence, your brain goes through a process called synaptic pruning, which is where these unnecessary connections are cut off to make the remaining pathways more efficient. In fact, your brain's not fully developed into your early to mid twenties. And although rapid synaptic growth ha ha stops in adulthood, really, there's certain times um, where this happens um, and we call this process hyperplasticity. Um, so it's not just in development, but it can happen other times in your life, and one of those is after a stressful event. So while most people have heard of post-traumatic stress disorder, um, which is a severe and very challenging mental health problem that happens in a minority of people following a very traumatic event, um, there's also something that's slightly less well-known, which we refer to as post-traumatic growth. Um, so post-traumatic growth again happens after trauma, and this is not denying that trauma is deeply distressing for the individuals involved, but afterwards these individuals experience powerful shifts in their thinking and seem to gain a deeper appreciation for life. Um, it's estimated that this post-traumatic growth happens to about a half or up to two thirds of people, and people have linked this to this time of rapid plasticity in the brain. Um, another way in which we can stimulate synaptogenesis um, and slightly less organically is by giving drugs. And so um, scientists, including myself, have discovered one class of drugs that increase synaptogenesis in the prefrontal cortex. And these are drugs that block a receptor in the brain called the n methyldiaspartate receptor um, or the NMDA receptor. So there's a wide class of these compounds, some you might not have heard of, like, such as memantine. Other ones are more common, things like ketamine, which is an anesthetic, sometimes used as a recreational drug. Um, so these compounds kickstart the exuberant synaptogenesis, which we normally see in teenagers. But when we give these to our patients, it doesn't mean they return to teenage mood swings or start using TikTok a lot. Um, basically, because the synaptogenesis is already happening 
in a developed prefrontal cortex. Um, actually, the reason the developing brain creates this synaptogenesis and all of these synapses so exuberantly is that it's doing something really important during your teenage years. And that's learning about the world around you and the environment. And so teenagers are a time of really rapid learning. And learning is something we ask people to do in psychological therapy. Um, so we ask them to think about new ways of behaving, adopt new strategies and learn new ways of thinking about the world. So actually being able to harness this time of rapid learning was a real potential for us um, in improving the effectiveness of psychological therapies. We also know that certain mental health problems are associated with lower rates of synaptogenesis. Um, so these include things like depression, eating disorders, and my particular area of expertise, which is addiction. And so because people have lower synaptogenesis anyway, psychological therapies, which require people to take new perspectives and learn new techniques, don't work as well as they might. So my research essentially has been looking at the time course and profile of this process of synaptogenesis in the brain, and then trying to see if we can target psychological therapies in that special window of synaptogenesis. So I've been really lucky to use a range of techniques in answering these questions, including neuroimaging. So we look at people and the networks of activation in their brains using MRI scanners. We use cognitive tasks, looking at people's memory and learning in the lab. Um, and we also look at, with other colleagues, the preclinical data and cells. So looking at protein changes on a very low molecular level. Um, but more recently, I've been involved in clinical trials, so I feel really, really privileged to sit at the interface of basic neuroscience and clinical psychology. So I get to both unlock the mysteries of the brain, but then use that knowledge to help target better therapies to improve the lives of people struggling with mental health problems. So the recent clinical trial, which I've completed um, last year, was with patients who've got really severe alcohol use disorder. So these are people who are drinking really heavily, some up to 40, 50 units a day. And most have tried a number of treatments and failed. Um, and so we, we had recruited 100 of these patients and we gave some a drug to induce such synaptogenesis and then gave them psychological therapy during this window of synaptogenesis. And the results were really exciting. So people who had the therapy alongside the drug compared to people who had either therapy on its own or the drug on its own, show much greater reduction in drinking at six months. And many of those patients are still abstinent at the end of a six month period and today. Um, so we had a really great response to the clinical trial and lots of the patients described it as life changing. Um, so I feel really lucky to be able to take some scientific knowledge through from the brain up into the patients. And now we're working with a company to develop our therapy and um, take it forward so it can be accessible for more people across the UK and worldwide. So I hope you've enjoyed stimulating the growth of some new synapses in this short talk. Take care of your brains and thanks for listening.